You didn't overindulge. You exercised on a regular basis. You made sure you got plenty of sleep and drank a lot of water. And you still can have diseases and injuries that come in this world. That's not the point. It's the attitude of taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually is as important as anything else you will do in this life. It is the most important thing. Of course, we need to take care of ourselves spiritually and stay close to God, but taking care of ourselves emotionally, taking care of ourselves intellectually, and taking care of ourselves physically has a lot to do with who we are. So yes, we need to do that. And we made time for the Lord in every aspect, whether it's time alone with Him, time reading His Word and studying it, time with others studying it, worshiping together with other believers, worshiping in private, just you and God. Those are things you did at the first. Consider how far you've fallen. And be sorry. Now, get up. Repent. Well, what do I do? Do the things you did at first. Commit to them. But I might fail. Just commit to them. Just start and ask God every day, one day at a time, Lord, help me to do it again. Help me to please you and do your your pleasing, good, and perfect will. That's what I want with my life, Lord. This is a short life, y'all. We need to help each other, stay focused, and heavenward. Okay? It's okay to mourn your sin. Matter of fact, you need to. I need to. I'm sorry. And I need to repent. I'm not going to wallow in self-pity. I'm going to repent and do the things I did at first. And let's just say you didn't do those things at first and this doesn't apply to you. You need to start. Because this is this is, is uh, living a Christian life. Those things, those practices, those spiritual habits that we have are part of how we stay close to God. Being alone with Him, reading His Word, being in prayer, worshiping Him, and being with other believers. If some of you have a physical condition where you cannot get out, find a way to talk to people on the phone. Find a way to, to, to at least interact on YouTube. Find a way to interact with somebody who's a next door neighbor. Find a way. You're not trying. Now, let me ask you this. If somebody's in the hospital or you are literally physically unable, and if you're truly unable, that's a different thing. I'm talking about the fact that you're not unable. You just aren't doing it. Repent. Maybe I'm not giving it my all like I used to in some areas of my life. Should I beat myself up and cry? Feel sorry for myself? Have a lot of self-pity? We've talked about that before. No. What do you do then? Well, you repent. You repent. Now, actually, I'm going to make this into a two-part, and I don't normally do this um, for a daily. Maybe that's because I'm going to just now turn it into the weekly. How about that? So this will be are better than therapy weekly. How about that? And it'll be two parts. I'm sorry I ran over, but I felt the desire um, to share what I feel God's putting on my heart, and I wonder if it's on any of yours. And maybe it's not. Maybe y'all are all doing great and good for you, good for you, good for you. Keep it up. Keep it up. But for those of us who are going, you know what? I can do better. How do I know? Because I used to. And God's saying, you know what, Beth? Thank you for asking me to examine you, that you're willing to be examined, and um, that you're willing to hear the truth. That's hard sometimes. We have, to, we have to do that. We have to hear the truth. We have to be willing to hear the truth. And be careful of who you hear it from because some people say, I've got a truth to tell you and that's not the truth. This is the truth. It is the Word of God. It is not okay. It is not okay. It doesn't mean God doesn't love me anymore. It doesn't mean God doesn't like me. It doesn't even mean that He doesn't recognize all I've done up to this point. And He's saying, yes, I recognize that. You did all the right things. You did all the right things. You did all the right things. You did all the right things that I set up for you to do. So you can't even give your own self glory. Only God gets the glory for all the good, even all the good that we do. Yes, you did good because I had it set out for you to do good. Your desire was to please me, and so you did it. I empowered you to do it, but you've stopped. 
or you've slowed down, or you've altogether fallen, and it's not okay. Now, only a liar would tell you it's okay. Just remember that. We do know the liar. He does not want you to get better. He does not want you to do God's will. He does not want you to go back and do the things that you know you should do. He wants you to fight your flesh and fail. And so when you fail, people say, don't feel bad. Don't beat yourself up because you fail. No. Okay, here's, here's, here's the good part of that. No, you don't need to beat yourself up. But you don't need to be okay with failing. When we fail, it is a sign to say, hmm, what went wrong and how can I repent? What can I do differently? Some of you may take this wrong, so I want to be very, very clear. I'm not trying to beat anybody up, including myself. I don't want to beat myself up and say everything you did was worthless. No, God just said, no, everything you did was good. I recognized it. He calls it out. He says, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this. And you think, well, I'm never just going to be good enough. No matter what I do, it's not enough for God. Newsflash, you're right. What we can do for God is never going to be enough. That's why Jesus had to come here and do it for us. God knows that we're, f we're frail and we're weak. He made us that way. He didn't make you strong. He's strong. He didn't need you to be strong. He made you weak. He made you dependent on him. That's how he likes it. That's not what he's upset about. It's that you're not dependent on him anymore. It's that I'm not relying on God like I once did and have the successes to show for it. It's not that I don't have successes in my life. He has shown me, yes, you have successes in your life because I made them and I made them happen for my own glory, not yours. Maybe that's one of the things that you've fallen away. You're seeking your own glory. Boo-boo. Whenever we seek something for ourselves. Y'all, that is just not how God operates. I don't care what the world tells you, and the world will tell you. Seek for yourself. Take care of yourself first. Well, there's some truth in that, that you have to take care of yourself enough first, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, in order to help others. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you get away from the things you did at first, where God was the center and first position in everything you ate, slept, drank, thought, spoke, listened to, spent time on, spent money on. It was all about him. He was first. And it's not okay for him to fall out of that position in your life. So here's the scripture. Revelation 2, 1 through 5 is a reflection time, an examination time, but the scripture for this week is Psalm 119, 161. My heart stands in awe of your word. Let this be all-encompassing in your life. Psalm, Psalms 119, verse 161. My heart stands in awe my heart. Do you realize we keep talking about the desires of our heart? If our heart is in awe of God's word, then we'll get back to where we once were. We'll put God first when we feel like eating a piece of cheesecake when we're 70 pounds overweight. It's like, Beth, no. It's not funny or cute. And really, it's not even indulgent at this time. You need to work on getting your body in shape before you kill yourself. God doesn't want you to do that. Um... I'm not saying you can't ever have a piece of cheesecake. Don't get things out of perspective about what I'm saying here. I'm saying when you know there's things you should do to take better care of yourself physically so that you can be a help to others and you can be useful to God, then do it. If you have got some sort of a condition that precludes you from being able to do that, say you're paraplegic and you say, Beth, I can't do it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when we can do something about it, but we've let our self-indulgence and our selfishness get in the way of putting God first. That's what I'm talking about. And so if we put the Word of God at the helm of our desires and we stand in awe of His Word, we will live differently. That's all I'm saying. And for me, it's a point of repentance. It's not that I don't stay in the Word every day, but 
I'm not really living it. And I'll just be very transparent with that. There's times that I put me first and what I want first in every area of my life. And God's saying, I never said that was okay. It's not okay. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you want to relay your thoughts to someone else, um, you can't read their mind and they can't read yours. So one of the ways that we use is words. And God's word is no different. He has used his word. Um, his thoughts are messages to us. And he is like a telescope. He can zoom in on the visibility of things that are too high and too far off. And um, without the aid of a telescope, we couldn't see it. And he can do that. He can bring heaven into focus. He can bring hell into focus. We can see things that are going on in the outer limits of the universe. Uh, the third heaven through God's word. We can see the spiritual world through God's word. Sometimes God's word is like a microscope, not a telescope. It causes to, us to hone in on the things deep down in our heart. And bring things into focus that otherwise we wouldn't see if we weren't in God's Word and Him using it as both a telescope to see far away and a microscope to see deeply up front. And it reveals things about the realm around us. The angels and the demons inhabit the area and what's actually going on and it magnifies everything. And sometimes God's Word is like a prism, you know, prism, you know, that, that um, shows the rainbow when you hold it up at lights. Um, and it takes God's light and it breaks it down so that we what appears to be white light actually has a realm of color and we can see it's that God for who he is while he is one he is also three father son and holy spirit so today take your thoughts your desires your heart to the king of kings the lord of lords um and realize the greatest treasure that you have is the word of God and be in all of it I hope this helps y'all and I love you very much pray for me and I'll pray for you okay I'll see you again soon. 